Welcome to the Esmir Card Studio. I need to make some greeting cards, so let's get started. In 2019, I did a free online course with Louise Fletcher, Find Your Joy. I will add the link to her website below. I'm actually still using most of what I've learned then today. I think she has the course once a year. Check it out. There is so much to learn from her. The starting point for the greeting cards is a technique or an exercise that was part of this course. I will use it as the backgrounds for the metal embossing designs. I think for now I'm just going to stay with it as is. And as I say that I just go in and I do something else because I think I'm going to overwork it. But try it. This is so much fun. I'm going to keep this to dry. And then once this is dry, I will take off or remove the tape. I'm busy removing the last of the tape. And as you can see, again, I am just too impatient to wait for the paint to dry properly. Um, if you want to have, you know, definite lines, I would suggest wait a little bit longer. What I've done here is I've gone in with um, my finger and I've just touched that up. And I might just do that all around. But I'm not even sure if I want to continue on doing it. I will just work with it the way that it is. So, again, when I did this one, I am definitely going to use, I will use the aluminum, but I will use the plain one and not add any color to it. Where if I'm going to use this, I will use the aluminum rather than pewter and I will definitely add some color to the metal uh, embossing. I mean, just think about a, a nice red flower or a green leaf or even maybe it doesn't go with this. But if you look at like, oh yeah, that can work like an ocean theme. Um, this one over there where you can do a night bright fish on there. I don't know. Once I start working with the metal I will have this ready and that will be my inspiration. I've gone ahead and I have torn the um, the mixed media backgrounds that we did into nine little pieces. Maybe I'm going to do something to lessen the white, I don't know. But for now, I'm going to continue on and working with the black. So I did exactly the same with the black on the white. Um, I had a look. Some I will actually use the full size and then for some of them I have gone ahead and I have drawn it into a square so that I'm just going to, it will be a small area on there. For these I don't really think I'm going to do anything about the white, I'm just going to leave the white um, border around it the way the, from the tearing but I'm definitely going to add color to the um, pewter although I haven't used pewter for this I used aluminum for the next step which is um, putting my design onto my aluminum and I'm just going to talk a little bit about cost that you that we have to keep in mind when we do our um, projects so just first thing first I've have my design on the front i've taped it to the front just to make sure that it stays secure and it doesn't run away from me because once it moves it's really difficult to get it right back on the same place i've also gone ahead and i've made the decision to do um two by two squares so all the aluminum pieces that will be on these greeting cards is going to be two by two some of them i might cut out right up until the end i, I don't know we'll see how that goes so one thing that you have to remember when you do trace is when you know it's a design that you are going to use more often um, best is always to use a different color pen or pencil doesn't matter which one of the one you are using but that gives you the line so i usually do my first one with a um, pencil second one with blue then i go on to red and i also have a purple pencil and by that time most most of the time the um paper is worn through and i have to get a new design or a new redo my design 
but getting back to the costs that we have oh, also something you can see there i missed and i gone a little bit skew i just leave it like that it's easier to fix once you work than what you have all these different lines that is there so when you think at uh, when you think about the projects that you are doing you have to keep cost in mind if it is for a gift I mean, it's there's no end to the cost. We can go as elaborate as what we want. But if you are selling your projects, you really have to keep the cost in mind. So for the same time that it's going to take me to do this designs on the metal, um, it's the same whether I use the pewter or whether I use aluminum. So because this is greeting cards, and I don't know what's going to happen with these greeting cards in the end, they might end up in the garbage. I don't know. Um, or I usually sell my greeting cards with a little insert saying that it can be cut and used and, and be framed. So something like this. This is from the previous collection that I did. So you can actually just cut it off there and you can have it framed and it's a little, you know, art piece. It's like this greeting card is living on forever. So keep those kind of things in mind when you do decide. And that's why for greeting cards, I occasionally, if it was somebody that I know and it's a really special birthday, I would definitely use pewter. But if it is just for retail, I will definitely, as now, just go in and use the aluminum. Yeah, you don't get the same effect, but it's just things to think about when you are working with your designs on what is going to happen with it in the end. I will link a video below on how to do metal embossing. that I have all my designs here and done I am going to finish them off with a frame just to round it off neatly I'm going to use my big wheel if I can find it oh there it is on the other side and I'm just going to work on the paper pad because I don't want it to be too deep so I'm just gonna go I'm gonna go right up until the edge and finish this off some of these what i'm actually going to do is i will add some background design as well um i don't know to which ones and which ones not well i definitely know the feather i won't because it's got all the design in there and some of them like definitely the sugar skulls i am going to cut out so i wouldn't do anything there so yeah let me just quickly finish here now I've done the the dotted frame around everything and I think I'm going to do a couple of them with the background design as I said. These three over here I didn't do anything because I'm just going to cut them out. So as for this design it is find something that you really like for me. Um, believe it or not it's a little design that was on my mom's wedding band when they got married which is um it's a little circle kind of thing and there is a small little flower and there was a little leaf on so i've sort of adopted this into my artwork because i just really love that wedding band and um so i do a couple of the designs and then i just fill it in with um lines in between so i'm going to start with the one and then from there i will do the rest so i have added the wax in the back 
and um, I will do a video on how to do the waxing as well one of these days. Next step is just to use the blackening. So I've decided not to go in with the blackening to all of them uh, or the background with all of them. So next, it's almost like wipe on, wipe off. You don't have to use gloves for this. I can have my hands full of paint. Doesn't bother me, but for some reason, I just don't like my hands to be black with this pen. And I try to reuse mine until I can't anymore. When you remove this, always try and go sort of in the same direction. It's your choice how much you want to leave on, how much you want to take away. Because I'm working on a back, black background, I might decide not to add that many or to remove most of the black. Actually, it doesn't really look bad with that. So I'm going to just go in one small little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to all of this. And then once this is done, I'm going to start adding color. I don't know if I'm going to do it with Sharpies. Maybe I'm going to use alcohol inks. I'm going to go ahead and use my Sharpies just because it's a fairly small design and, you know, the alcohol inks tends to spread. So I'm just going to start randomly and um, maybe this flower I'm going to do red. And again, I'm using my Sharpies. You can basically use any alcohol-based um, marker for this. Copic markers works very well on the pewter or the metal because it is alcohol-based. It's just I find it not very cost-effective because the Copic markers is fairly expensive. So, and the shop is, I wouldn't say it's cheap, but compared to the um, topic markers it's relatively cheap i just want to mention after i was finished with my first one and i started with the second one i realized i didn't clean it with um, alcohol swaps so always remember to clean before you go into the um, the blackening and i've used a water base um, permanent marker I will have everything linked in the below and it'd be while I'm busy with the red just go to all the red I will link that below I will also have a design sheet for you that you can download with some of these designs on that you can use for your own use yeah. also if there's any you know ideas that you have for projects Please share that with us in the um, comments and we can always see what we can do or just if you have a question on, you know, how to do certain things. And please, if somebody knows how the answer, even although you're not sure, just come up with suggestions and just share it in there. That's how we're going to really learn from each other is by sharing I don't always get to the comments in time. So if you see something and you know the answer, go for it. I can maybe learn, not, not maybe, I can definitely learn something from everybody else as well. Now I'm going to sit and color now. Um, it's like watching paint dry. I don't think you want to sit me sit and watch me coloring all these things so i will show you the next step once everything is done my mixed media pieces I've glued them down and um, so now I'm just going to start gluing down my the aluminum pieces I am using the 450 quick dry adhesive and the reason I prefer this 
adhesive is because I know once it's down, it is down. Well, you, you still have some move room or flexibility with time-wise for reposition, repositioning, but um, I know that it will keep the metal down. If some of the glue seeps out on the side, I just absolutely keep it like that for a while and then later on I will go back and clean it up. That's another reason why I really like this glue. It's almost like a, um, I call it a cold hot glue. And there you go. I hope you had as much fun as I had today in the studio. Always remember, the world of reality has its limits, but the world of imagination is boundless.